Hey everyone, Dr. Callanan here, naturopathic doctor and regional territory manager with Designs for Health. I thought I would do something a little bit different in this email in which is sharing a really interesting patient case that I had just come in this week to give you a little rapid fire with some different treatment ideas and protocols that you can utilize in your practice. For those of you who don't know me, my primary focus is in metabolic syndrome, resistant weight loss, things like insulin resistance, high cholesterol, etc. And this patient case was over a 10-week period where we were able to do before and after labs. And I'm um, really excited to share this case with you. Now, with regards to the reality that we're facing today, the probability of achieving a normal weight with the general recommendations, which most patients are just told to eat less and exercise more. And this review study of the literature looked at what is the overall success rate in just telling a patient to eat less and exercise more. And it's actually pretty low. And if you've, you've seen patients in your practice who have struggled with resistant weight loss, you know that they have tried many different things and perhaps they'll lose weight initially, but the recurrence of that weight coming back is quite staggering. So there is work to do here. And the way I treat resistant weight loss in my practice and the way I explain this to patients is always looking for the underlying root cause as to why it's more challenging for them in particular to ideally obtain a healthy body weight or that five to 10% overall reduction in weight loss that we're looking for. Now, with respect to the statistics, you all know this, 64% of Canadians adults over the age of 18 are considered overweight or obese. 30% of the children aged five to 17 are overweight or obese. 7.3% of Canadians aged 12 and or older are being reported to be diagnosed with diabetes and many more have insulin resistance and we just don't know it. 25% of the adults are considered to have metabolic syndrome and the statistics on insulin resistance are much, much higher than that. And although we cannot change risk factors such as family history, age, ethnicity, et cetera, we do know through naturopathic medicine and functional medicine that we absolutely can change the lifestyle risk factors such as diet, lifestyle, and exercise to make this easier for individuals. So let's dive right into the case. This was a 53-year-old postmenopausal female she had recently gained about 50 pounds in the last year. She's currently 235 pounds when I first saw her. She was also experiencing some joint pain, significant pain in her knees, fingers, hips. This even impaired her ability to walk into work, which was quite alarming for her. There was significant fatigue. She had a strong family history of hypothyroidism, and yet she had not been tested herself for hypothyroidism. She was on no medications, no supplements, and no past medical diagnosis. She did have poor sleep, waking about two to three times per night and having a hard time getting back to sleep. And she did work in health there, so she did have um, high stressors coming from the workplace environment, especially in the last year or two. So we decided to run some blood work and come up with a unique plan for her. The first thing that we noticed on the hematology report is that her red blood cells were a little bit high. Now, when I see this, one of the things that I'm always asking in the patient history is, are you having any um, difficulty sleeping? Could there be any sleep apnea? Do we need to send this patient for a sleep study? Is there any concerns with dehydration or is her testosterone high? Her testosterone was not high. She did report not drinking probably as much as she should. And she was waking up in the middle of the night. I do work integratively with a nurse practitioner in my practice. So she is on a wait list to have a sleep study done as well. The other thing I've noticed that we really like to pay attention to is the hemoglobin A1C. So this patient probably would have been told that she's completely fine. She doesn't have diabetes. There's no reason for concern, but her hemoglobin A1C does put her in the at-risk category of prediabetes. So we are looking to assess her for insulin resistance and possibly treat that as one of the root causes of why it's a little bit more challenging for her to maintain a healthy weight. Her glucose fasting was 5.3. With respect to her liver panel, that was fine. She doesn't drink alcohol. Um, her electrolytes were fine, but her cholesterol panel, what we're seeing is even though her HDL or her good cholesterol is um, not of a concern, her LDL cholesterol is coming up a little bit, raising the total cholesterol here. So this is one of the markers that we're looking at improving over the next 10 weeks as well. Her insulin fasting, in my opinion, was high at 136. We like to see insulin around 20 to 40 for fasting for optimal. 
Now with her strong family history of hypothyroidism, her TSH was raised here to a 4.03. Now this patient didn't want to go on thyroid medication. She wanted to wait and follow up and we'll share the after labs, um, which were quite impressive. So we looked at possibly increasing some of the things that would be contributing to the higher TSH. So looking at her stress and managing her sleep and working on her low vitamin D, supporting the insulin resistance and just repeating the labs to see what happened um, in about the 10 to 12 week mark. She didn't have any thyroid antibodies, which was great. We talked to her a lot about the importance of stress management because her cortisol level there was at the higher end of optimal. Um, she did how to work a little bit on the mindset and how she's perceiving her environment at work and really focus on drinking enough water and sleeping, kind of prioritizing herself over the next 10 weeks as well. Her estradiol and her progesterone were quite low and signified that she is postmenopausal. So we did start some bioidentical hormones as well, which I'll, I'll discuss exactly what we did in the upcoming slides. With respect to the lower than optimal DHEA and testosterone, we were going to leave this as something to work on further down the road because her ultimate goal was to get her weight down and her energy up and her sleep improved. We also noticed higher amounts of C-reactive protein, which we are going to monitor as well to make sure that comes into the optimal range. Now, with respect to the joint pain, we did run some antibody testing and she has been referred to a rheumatologist as well based off of the fact that some of these autoimmune markers were elevated. Her vitamin D, which is really important, I don't need to tell you how important the vitamin D is, um, but given the fact that she doesn't get much sunlight, it wasn't a surprise that her vitamin D was low. Now, here is a summary of what we found. Definitely postmenopausal, higher than optimal insulin, so some insulin resistance is present there. Her hemoglobin A1C was going up into the at risk of prediabetes. She does have that elevated TSH. Inflammation was high, low vitamin D, higher than optimal cholesterol. Autoimmune markers were present, and her cholesterol was just teetering on that higher amount of range, or her cortisol, my apologies. So what did we do for treatment? So again, I worked collaboratively with the nurse practitioner. We did hormone replacement therapy for her. We also started her on metformin as well as Berbavale. I did do a higher dose of Berbavale here to get the insulin levels down. In my experience, if you do higher dose of treatments in the therapeutic range for a shorter amount of time and patient really, they really do see the additional results for it. And my goal is always the shortest treatment if possible, because I just find it's hard for people to commit and to be taking these supplements all of the time. So we had her commit to a higher dose for four weeks with the metformin and drop it down. So don't be afraid to dose higher than what's on the bottle. Two caps twice a day with meals is what I typically do initially for insulin resistance with the Berbavale. And yes, that's a higher dose. But after that, we do drop it down to one cap twice a day. Now, when I do twice a day, it's because most of my patients are eating two meals a day or two meals with a snack. The hypothyroidism she wanted to monitor, so no problem, we'll repeat the labs and see. We put her on an anti-inflammatory nutrition plan. In my practice, what we typically do is remove the inflammatory foods. We start with the basics of removing sugars, removing all processed foods, don't um, heat oils, avoid the inflammatory oils like the canola and the seed oils, all of those good things. Incorporate more lean proteins, more fruits and vegetables, just basic back to whole foods. We also had her do intermittent fasting and two meals a day without snacks. I do find the ProBioMed is really great for reducing levels of inflammation. There's some studies on those particular strains as well. I would encourage you to check those out. With respect to weight loss resistance, the studies are more so on the side of bifidobacterium than lactobacillus. So I always choose a probiotic that has a good amount of bifidobacterium in it. The low vitamin D, we did a higher dose of vitamin D for one month, and then we reduced it to her maintenance dose after we followed up with her labs to make sure her vitamin D did come back. With respect to cholesterol, my favorite supplement is the Anato E300. It's only one cap a day. I've seen phenomenal results with it. The literature is all summarized really nicely on the tech sheets. Designs for Health has really great tech sheets on each and every one of their products. So I would highly recommend checking those out. I often copy paste and include some of that literature within the patient's chart so they can understand why they're taking something. Berberine and the Anato E, really great research for insulin resistance, higher levels of cholesterol, metabolic syndrome in general. 
with respect to individuals who we are reducing the amount of calories, we're reducing the amount of times that they're eating, I always use additional fibers to control appetite, especially those with inflammation and insulin resistance. We know that's associated with food cravings and leptin resistance and having a really hard time controlling their appetite. So I use paleo fiber a lot, even you know one scoop two to three times a day just to control that for, for her. We also use the detoxification support packs, the antioxidants there, the selenium, the N-acetylcysteine. I would suspect that perhaps some of the ingredients in the detox support packs was what really helped to bring the TSH down into the normal range, which we'll soon see. Um, autoimmune markers, of course, we respond in the immune system <clears throat> with the probiotics, also the vitamin D, but she did have a referral to the rheumatologist as well. In order to control appetite, another great one that I find patients really like is the amino acid supreme. So technically, amino acids will break your fast, but it's ever so slight. It's really low calories, and I do find that this helps curb appetite for many of my patients who are doing intermittent fasting and reducing the number of times that they eat. In addition, when a patient is close to their goal weight, I have them incorporate more and more amino acids to help preserve the lean muscle mass. And I just find patients in general have a really hard time getting in enough protein. So this is almost like a safeguard to ensure that they have at least the basic amino acids. The high cortisol, what I really had her do is focus on lifestyle, focus on sleep hygiene, and we incorporated some magnesium before bed. Now, what did the results say? Oh, the nutrition first. So I had her consume all her food within an eight hour window, remove the inflammatory oils, don't heat oils. We focused on really high fiber, tons and tons of plants, half your plate of vegetables, a quarter of your plate of the protein is what I tell patients, kind of like a palm size or five to six ounces, depending on what, they, what they're willing to do. If they're willing to measure, they just want to eyeball, that's fine. Cruciferous vegetables at each and every meal, broccoli, kale, cauliflower, bok choy. I find patients just aren't consuming enough of those. I didn't eliminate fruits for her. We still focused on um, about a four ounce, pro, four ounce portion of fruits at each meal to help curb any of those, those sugar cravings that she might have had. With respect to the carbohydrates, we did do a lower carbohydrate paleo nutrition plan. If she wanted more of the, the carbohydrates, they all need to come from root vegetables, at least for the first six weeks. So we removed the inflammatory foods, gluten, dairy, soy, all of that good stuff with the expectation that she would slowly add those back in in the maintenance phase to see how her body respond. And we eliminated the snacking for the insulin resistance piece. After six weeks, she's down 30 pounds. Um, she does have a little bit more weight that she wants to lose. But after the six weeks of losing, I typically transition patients into a maintenance phase where we teach them how to maintain their weight loss. Because what we know from the literature is it's easier to lose weight, it's harder to sustain it and keep it off. So patients work with me and my team to make sure that they can sustainably incorporate some of the foods that they're missing and that this weight is maintained. The most amazing part is when I spoke to her, she had no joint pain. She felt like she could run into work. None of her joints were bothering her, which is really, really impressive. She's still working on stress management. In our maintenance phase, we're going to work on some of that cortisol piece, um, probably incorporate some things like ashwagandha and adrenal support at, at this phase. She says her energy, has, um, her energy has improved. She's still waking in the nighttime although it's significantly less than our first follow-up. So previously she was waking up two to three times and now she's just waking up once, once per night, which is really great. Now, what does her lab say? Well, her glucose fasting went from 5.3 to five. Her hemoglobin A1C went from 5.7 to three, which is really great. We also saw improvements in her cholesterol levels. Her total um, cholesterol is down, uh, what does it say here? Total cholesterol down to 5.28 previously. I put the previous markers here just to compare at six. Her LDL went from four to 3.29, which is amazing. And the best part is her LD or her HDL cholesterol, her good cholesterol hasn't actually decreased with anything. It went slightly up. Oftentimes when my patients are on a strict nutrition plan, they're focusing lots on protein and vegetables. Sometimes I see that that HDL does go down, um, even so temporarily. And then at that point in maintenance, we're really encouraging them to increase their things like healthy fats, nuts, seeds, salmon, avocado. But for her, it stayed quite nice, which is great to see. 
her insulin fasting went from 136 to 60, so that is a big jump. And this is where I really want to emphasize, don't be afraid to do higher dosages, at least at the start, so that they see the momentum and they can see such positive changes. It's so much easier for them to see improvements in the cholesterol, improvements in their weight when their insulin gets down. Now, I like to see insulin around 20 to 40. So when I spoke to her about her maintenance phase, I said, okay, now we can start to incorporate some carbohydrates and we can incorporate a snack if you would like, but we need to stay at least on the berberine for a little bit longer, just so that she continues to see her results. And she was on board with that. With respect to her thyroid, her thyroid, her TSH went from four to 2.65. We're very happy with this. Not every single patient would see this big of an improvement, but for her, it's great. Yes, the T3 has gone slightly down, but she reports feeling really good. Her energy is better and, and she's super happy. So we'll just continue to monitor her thyroid function um, probably every six months to a year with her strong family history. Her hormones looked um, definitely improved based off of the hormone replacement therapy, and we're going to be continuing to monitor her labs every three months. And of course, her vitamin D here has improved. Now, we had done a much higher dose at the start with the support of the nurse practitioner. So this is where you really need to look at repeating labs to know um, if the dosaging that you're using is working. And the nice part about Designs for Health launching their 2000 IU per drop vitamin D is it's much easier to dose at those, those higher levels um, if, you, if you can do that. So when I see that her vitamin D has come up, now what we're going to do is look at, um, now that she's close to the optimal, reducing that dose um, and continuing even throughout the summer. What is our next plan? So our next plan is to definitely continue to look at the inflammation, definitely continue to look at um, the cortisol piece and work on some of the adrenal health piece. And the most important part that I would say for patients who have lost weight is again, maintaining it. So continuing to work with the fiber, the paleo fiber, continuing to work with the berberine can be quite helpful to make sure that the hunger hormones are regulated, that they're not having, mm. not having cravings. So in a summary, the hypothyroidism resolved, the insulin resistance significantly improved. She's no longer at risk of type two diabetes, which is great. The cholesterol normalized and her vitamin D came back to normal. So here's our plan moving forward. We are going to, or she wants to continue to lose more weight. So with the nurse practitioner's help, we are going to continue with the metformin and then reassess. I do want her to continue with the Anato E. Anato E is one of those ones where for this type of patient, I feel personally it would be even better for her to continue on that long-term because um, there's so many benefits from that. I would prefer her to be on that one versus even like a, a multivitamin. I do want her to continue the vitamin D. It's really, really important to control appetite and maintenance. So we're having her continue the paleo fiber and the berberine. And now with respect to cortisol and sleep, her sleep has improved, but not totally. So we're having her try out the Catacola Calm three before bed, continue with the magnesium and then add on the insomnitol chewables as well. Sometimes it's just about, or at least in my experience, is getting individuals out of the habit of waking up in the middle of the night. So if we can get her to sleep soundly through the night for a couple of weeks, then we can scale back on a lot of these supplements. So our next goal is to maintain her weight for four weeks. We definitely want to increase her calories, increase the amount of fats, increase the amount of carbohydrates. The idea with this reverse diet or this maintenance diet is to have her develop a sustainable lifestyle plan that no longer feels restrictive. So we work with patients over the four weeks to say, what are you missing? What do you want to do? Try out new things while we're here to troubleshoot. And as long as the weight is maintained, then that's fantastic. I actually would prefer <laughs> patients to do maintenance for longer than four weeks, um, but four weeks is the minimum. And then after the four weeks, as long as she's really incorporated more foods into her lifestyle, then she would be fine to do another losing, losing round. So that's what we're waiting on. I thought that was a really um, awesome testament to how amazing just the basics are, the foundations of diet, lifestyle, sleep, naturopathic medicine, and functional medicine. So I, I was really excited to share that with you guys. If you have any questions for me, please let me know. I would highly encourage you to check out the text sheets on the Onato, the berberine, um, the high dose vitamin D that just came out. If you have any product questions, make sure to let me know and we'll talk soon.